Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Um, today I am welcoming back one of my very good friends, Dan Baker. Hi. <laughs> Dan's been up since 4 a.m. because he wasn't feeling, or I don't know, what'd you say? You no, took, I was feeling good. You're feeling great? You just took rape or something? What happened? Oh, well, last night. Yeah, well, yeah, so I, I've... I think it's related to the rape. I took, I've been doing rape pretty late just before bed at like midnight. Snorting that rape. Yeah. And I do, I do quite a bit. I do a lot. What are you trying to do? Blow yourself out of the hemisphere? (laughs) (laughs) No comment. (laughs) Yeah. And, and then, um, also I just love that Dan was like, I'm going to lay on the bed. <laughs> so if you're watching visually, Dan's laying on the bed and, and I love it. Yeah, I don't I I mean I'm making no promises here. I'm just <laughs> this is this is the mood right now. So <laughs> it's the vibe. <laughs> We're vibing. But, but yeah, I've been well, it, I think it's really it, it seems related to the rape, but I I you know, will wake up at like 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning just like wide awake. Just like Sometimes it sometimes it's at the end of a dream. I'll have a dream and then I wake up just wide awake and then um and then I can't you know, I'll lay there for a while but I can't really fall back asleep and then I just get up at, you know, four thirty or so. And it's I mean it's actually really nice. Like I'm tired, but I really it feels nice to get up that early. And well, this is what I was just saying. And then I was like, let's just put the pot. Cause I, so Dan and I talk all the time. Like when, when we're together, we can, we can sit and talk for like five hours straight and just be like, da, 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 da. and I'm like, why don't we put this on the podcast? Not like anything super serious, just like us vibing. I mean, what is serious? Let's be not serious anymore in our lives. Um, uh, but this, the reason why I was bringing this up is because for me, it's been getting so hot here that I feel like a blob. Like by 10 a.m., it's just you mm. want to melt into the sidewalk that we don't have here on Cobanyang. <laughs> um, but you just want to like melt because the heat is so strong that if I don't get up and do exercise or like be outside in the morning, I kind of have this like restlessness of being inside. And also I can't go outside because my... My Irish skin is just like burns in one second. I don't know. I'm always worried yeah, about you I and your skin. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, but this has been also going back to like this thing with me recently is. Okay, real talk. Sometimes, uh, a lot of times throughout my life, I go through bouts of depression because I'm like, am I doing what I meant to do in the world? Like, am I making the impact I'm meant to make? Because I have such a huge vision of what I feel the world could be, can be, you know, the kind of wh- what we were here during lockdown, like us all living with e- like right next to each other, living together, like this just like tribe community feeling of like we're in it together as a community. Even if you're not best friends with people in your community, you still look out for each other. You still, you know, I remember one time like, seen someone come into a coffee shop and I saw I'd heard that he was just back on the island and I was just like welcome back even though we didn't even need to have a conversation it was just like we're in the same community I know who you are I I value you as someone in my community and this just this feeling of like we are together in this and and also this shared mission of like we are here together in this to make a better earth together. Like we are consciously co-creating something beautiful in the world. And I look around and I get really depressed by what's happening. And then I'm like, okay, wait, hold on. I'm the one who's supposed to be, not like I'm the one, but like I choose to be someone who is leading the way vibrationally and just through my beingness of we can choose to live a life that is in alignment with what we what we choose and what we want in our timeline. So, you know, I cause because I have it, like I have my community, I have my people, I have I have this beautiful life here in paradise. And then I'm just like, I, w- I would love this for everyone, you know? And then Ferdy and I, you know, he's really good at cheering me up and getting me going and stuff. And he's like, okay, so, cause I just, sometimes I hit this point of like, what does any of this matter? And I've had friends kill themselves and I, and I don't think that they killed themselves because of, 
I just think when you when you wake up spiritually and you're like very conscious of like what's happening in the world, it's it's very easy to hit this point of like nothingness. But then you get this choice because when you realize nothing really matters intrinsically, you get a choice to make everything matter. And that's why like today I woke up at like seven, I went to the beach, I did meditation, Rape went for a run, I got a massage. And I'm just like feeling so good in my body and feeling like I'm vibing. And Faraday and I yesterday were talking about like uh, what what are things that w- like what are the parameters of things that we would like to work on because sometimes <laughs> wait okay so I said w- I was telling Dan just now I was like you know it's, uh, it's, I want to make sure I'm having fun I want to help people and I want to make money doing all of those and then what did you say <laughs> say it well I th- I guess I thought that that was kind of obvious <laughs> <laughs> like it, I, I, it was like this is. I, it was like this is the. I feel like it's obvious, and it was like, is it? This is like a question, or th- this, this is like a new idea, because because the way that you were talking about it was like this is like this new. It's like the topic of conversation right now. <laughs> no, it's, it's this more. new idea, and it was like, <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> no, it's more like. Um, sometimes I get a little like giving too much, and it's not fun. You know, like for me, I get I get a little out of balance in the quote unquote trying to save everyone, trying to help the community, trying to give, give, give and not I forget to have fun. I forget. Oh, like Freddie's like, baby, you should charge you for your like you should charge. You're giving so much energy. You're coaching this person. You should charge. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. Like this this reminder. I know all of these things. But when you live in like the matrix or the world like outside the island, a lot of these things are like built into the structure. Like, okay, you hire me for something, you pay me for something. But in like the new earth structure, like we're kind of, it's all like we're all sharing, we're all helping each other, we're all flowing. And then we're trying to figure out this balance of energy exchange and what feels good in our bodies. And of course, for me, I would love it if we like never had to think. I wish money just like didn't exist. Like I just wish we were abundant in food and resources and and, you know, and we just traded and shared and like helped each other. And you know what I mean? Like all of our survival needs were met and we could just thrive. I feel like that's how humans are meant to live. And we just are not there right now. So everyone's like spending like most of their lives trying to cover their survival needs. And then when you get past the survival, and I have been past survival need quota for a very, very, very long time. And that's when you start looking around. And I know, according to Bashar, he says like creative expression and connection. And for me, like the connection part of the community is what really, really gives me so much meaning in my life. Anyway, that's just what's been going through me. What do you think about that? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Well, I don't know. It's, it's like you moaned. Well, it, no, I mean, it's a lot. And I, I don't, it's, I don't really, it's not like I have a clear thought around this. But um, with money... I don't know. It sounds a little bit like, I don't know. This is just what's coming up is like, it's, it's like, it's not the money. It's that we care about it so much. You're like really loud. Okay. No. So like there, that's great. How's that? That's great. Okay. But sometimes I get that's really excited and yeah, that's talk fine. louder. Okay. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like, uh, I just want to say I love your voice. You have a podcast voice. I say this to you all the time. But also, I have my earphones in the mic, so I can hear how loud it is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, Thank so you got you. nothing to say to this? Well, no. Well, no. I mean, okay. Like, I, I mean, I, I feel like whatever I'm gonna say about this is like is just gonna sound stupid and, <laughs> and not like it's like I don't know. It just just say it. I don't care. I just well, want to hear what you think. Well, it's it's like when it's like when the basic needs are all met. Um, I don't know. It's like well, it's like then what's the problem? Like it, it like we still um, we have, you know, we have this conditioning to like accumulate and save and you know uh, hoard resources, and it's basically what everybody's doing. Um, 
and it's like there's but for me I, that for me the problem is not so much that it's like i want to help everyone to get to where i am i think that's where and i don't know how to do that i have like the opposite problem of like everyone in the world everyone's trying to just watch out for themselves and i'm like why are we not all watching out for each other and the earth and like yeah like we're all in this together um yeah I don't, like i, I feel like <laughs> i, don't, I, really I just don't. feel like it would be so much easier for me if i didn't care about the whole world and if i didn't care about the people and the the earth like yeah but yeah. i feel like my soul was like no you're meant to care like this is why you're here and i'm like then fucking give me something to do with this like i i'm i'm here i'm ready for the mission i'm ready to lead us into like this new earth so yeah so so i guess where i'm where i've been at is kind of it almost like the opposite end of the spectrum where um i don't know i've i have i've it, it i have sort of given up i've i've sort of, it's it, there's this feeling of like I, not hopelessness it's like that i don't know it's like <laughs> like like i was listening to a, to an interview um, to this morning about uh, this woman talking about like nuclear holocaust, you know, and it's like how close we are to just like ending the world. I, I feel like there, it's just this energy. It's like th there's the, like end of the world energy in a way, and and it's not it's not that I it, so so it's not like I'm dwelling on that in like a negative sense, but it's like there's man I don't this is this it's it's hard to ex to explain this, but. I think I think I've gone in the other end, end of the spectrum where it's like all I'm really doing is just kind of focusing on myself and my immediate surroundings and making like helping helping who whoever comes into my sphere of of influence or something but like not not in, it's like it's like the best way to help people is to focus on yourself is is my philosophy you know i would say that for most people that's actually accurate because they have so much shit they need to like work through i'm not saying you ha you're like fucked up or anything to <laughs> i just mean like a lot of people really do have a lot of stuff they need to process so that they can like because we are all energetically co like connected so if you are say you're healing your trauma like you're healing it for the collective like no matter what you do like for everyone yeah. is yeah. and so I think that is really important. Like f for me, I just have, I've, I've done the work. So I'm just here like, okay, like twiddling my thumbs. But this is like right now, uh, did, did I tell you this? That like right now in, in April, in the beginning of April, I, apparently, you know, astrologically, we are going through this really huge like um, timeline, like energetic timeline shift where people are either going to go super, super deep into fear or they're going to go the other direction. Like they're going to choose to stay grounded, choose to like be in the love and like stay in their center energetically. Because most of the stuff that's happening in the world right now is actually mental and emotional warfare. It is not physical warfare. It is like getting you so in fear that you're not in your power and you just like freeze and you don't do anything. And I think the that is like... I feel like this is the thing that makes me a little bit sad is that there's so many people <laughs> that are either frozen because they're just they're so in the fear they don't know like they're s bombarded by the media telling them like mm -hmm. you know like Nuclear what yeah, yeah yeah like, um, they, which like according to Bashar would never happen because they would fuck up other planets and other dimensions and like apparently that's like the one thing that they will not let us do is to ourselves it's like complete utter nuclear destruction mm. but um. And I'm over here like like popping my head up out of the water, like, is anyone else seeing what I'm seeing that we we can totally go in this very positive direction if we just stop allowing ourselves to look at all of this shit that is igniting our fear response and just focus on a positive direction. Like I'm not just saying like first of course it needs to start emotionally, mentally, and then it's vibrational when it's in that field and then it becomes physical it's not like well the 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 thing that i 
the good thing about all this that I feel is tell me Dan tell me well the, it, you know or like like say with like AI it's like there's all there's a lot of fear around AI I think AI and is amazing yeah 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 of course of course but it's like but there's but there's like a lot of fear among I mean and, and there's a lot of legitimate you know sort of reasons to have fear around it but I but I guess the, like the good thing about all of these these sort of apocalyptic uh, ideas is that it's the discomfort that it, it that that wakes you up I think it's like it's like yeah. when it's like things need to get worse before they're gonna get better and so when they're getting worse I actually get kind of excited because it's like okay we're like things things are getting they're going they need to get so bad that it disrupts things enough to get people to do something about it and to to shift their focus and 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 wake up to this stuff so that they can move in another direction but as long as we're in this kind of middle ground we just kind of it, it's like it's like a purgatory or something <laughs> limbo yeah yeah i i feel you like i i feel like whatever is happening externally is it causing us to have the we we get to choose our response this is what i was saying like people are either gonna like this stuff is gonna keep happening and then you get to choose okay am i going to allow it to come into my body and like overwhelm me or am i gonna allow this to like cause positive change in me and have me face my shit and like fully integrate right. like the goal is full integration like yeah it's like it's like sometimes like when you're depressed sometimes you have to get so you have to suffer through so much depression before it it turns the ship around like you have to suffer intensely but I, until I feel like to, that to is wake a, up. but the, the thing is I feel like that's a choice that's what I'm saying is like the like okay I am here to tell people that is a choice because or you can just choose to wake up that's what I'm saying. Sure. Like suffering only happens when you when you you have pain in your body in some way and you choose to stay in that. Like <laughs> you choose to allow that to cause you like you make a, a mental negative belief because of the pain or it reignites and reaffirms a negative belief that you already had, you know? Yeah. And it and it it it's necessary and it helps but i think at the end of the day the per the individual needs to want it they it's it nobody can help except for them like i, I for like, sure i just know. think like i know that for me having these like beacons of light in the world of like someone who has gone through the darkness and chosen the light like that's really that's really powerful because if the news and everyone else is telling you to let go of your power, go into the fear, like fear is the biggest way you can disempower yourself because then you just go into straight survival mode and you'll, you're very easily manipulatable, manipulatable, malleable, whatever. Yeah. Like it's so easy for governments and w the media to push you in the direction that they, their agenda is. If you allow yourself to be in the fear, if you stay in your grounded place as a sovereign being who like is connected to source, getting their own downloads, then you will move in the direction wherever your soul wants you to go. And like, that is the choice that's happening. And f f what I'm trying to say is I really believe that the more all of this develops, we are choosing the timelines that we're playing out. There's a multitude, an endless amount of timelines of things that are going to happen. I really believe this. And then as we choose, we pick the timeline. For instance, I was traveling all over the world when COVID was coming through. Like I left Thailand in in February, in the beginning of February, when, it, when I had first started hearing about COVID in China. And I could feel, I can sense things. I could feel that it was going to spread through the whole world. And I just told myself, okay, let's get as much traveling in as I can before this hits. Because I knew it was going to, I just knew it was going to lock down the world. I went to Europe. I went to America. I went to South America. I went to Africa. I literally went across all of the continents. And then I came back to Thailand two days before the country locked down. This is what I mean about timeline splits. The whole world had this very, well, okay, I will say, pr from my perspective, perceived as a very negative timeline during COVID, like locked inside, in a lot of fear, all the things. We experienced the same 
same earth reality, we experienced a paradise timeline during COVID where we literally had the whole beach to ourselves, a very deep community. We didn't have COVID on the island for the first year and a half. So we just, like, if you put your phone away, COVID didn't exist. And I'm telling you, I feel like this is hap- it's going to happen again. There's going to be some of these timeline junctures where you can choose, I'm going to jump on this train or I'm going to jump on this train. Well, yeah, I, but I think a big... So, like, one of the big challenges that I see is that here we have the luxury of separation. Like, we're literally on an island. We didn't have COVID for the first year. And we're surrounded by people who share the same Yeah, conscious, conscious people. And... You know, it, and like this, is, I have a hard time when I like being back in the, I was back in the U.S. for nine months this past year. And <clears throat> and I had a really hard time because because I'm there's so many people and there's it's it's like the it's. You know, it's it's like you are the to a large extent, you you become the vibration that you're surrounded by, like like you are the average of your I actually friend. learned the term for this. It's called forced resonance. Right. Like the, by the sheer like amount of vibrational around you, like they force you vibrationally to get in the same resonance as them. Yeah. And so, and, and that's, yeah. So I had a big problem with that because, because I could feel that, that the average vibration was full of fear and people were watching the news and, Fox you know the whole news. Fox News. <laughs> yeah, well, any news. I know. It, like, I just... it, like it's it's like, the, and, and that's the thing. It, you know, it's yeah, it's like any news. I don't and watch the news anymore, just so in case anyone's wondering. Do you watch the news? I I go on Reddit a lot more than I would like. I I find that it, like for me, that's that's actually like a thing that I think if if I could cut that out, I think it would help my 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 belief structure would improve a lot why because they're into conspiracy stuff no no well it's no 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 it's because well so one is is news so like if i check like let's say i check it every day which Mm -hmm. i do um every day i'm being exposed to events that are happening around the world that are completely irrelevant to my direct experience. Like like what ha- what happens in Russia and what happens in Israel and what happens with the Fed or Trump or whatever, fucking P. Diddy getting, P. Why Diddy, God, it? he like fled the countries, you know. It, Why does it, this matter in your everyday life? Well, that's what I'm saying, it doesn't. It has, it, ha- it does not matter at all, but I'm, I'm, diverting my attention to these things and then I'm looking at what other people are saying about it and so I'm taking in it just sounds like it's full distraction well I mean no I mean I mean there's it's not it's not like yeah I mean it has some value it's not it's not pure garbage but but yeah it's it's I find that my the ideas and my thinking becomes absorbed with that energy like i absorb the 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 average vibration of the content that i consume Mm -hmm. the podcasts that i listen to the things that i read the tiktok videos that i watch the music that i listen to well no but well but at the same no you can't you can't throw all this stuff out because i mean this is this is fascinating shit what's going on you're like looking at it as like an anthropology study oh my god yeah i mean Reddit, reddit is incredible yeah, I mean, like, like the the amount, the the amount that I've learned and that my consciousness has has expanded because of being, you know, like I'm not I'm not just I'm not mindlessly scrolling garbage. I mean, this is I'm I'm no. So studying, why? But why you know? is it something that it would improve if you didn't look at it? I think there's something there. Because, because my. Like, uh, like, like, okay. If there, there's a thousand people that are commenting on the latest Trump news story, so now I'm reading all these comments and all of that, all of these ideas yeah. from 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 like like most I, most people are fucking idiots. You know, it's like they're it's like no, it's like for real. It's like it's f- the world is full of fools, 
and I'm reading, like I have no idea who these people are, but I'm absorbing their ideas. Mm -hmm. It's like they're planting seeds of what they think in in my thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I, it gets polluted. It gets, it, it my. That's the, what I meant about distraction. Like right now, our biggest power is our connection to source. Right. And so that's, I view yeah. everything like friends, any external information, whatever I'm watching, if I'm watching something on Netflix, is this going to help me in my connection to source or is this going to like numb or distract me from my connection to source? Like, which is like yeah. your groundedness in this reality, you know, like I want things to like help me activate me to keep raising my vibration, not like numb it or lower it. And I feel like a lot of people are doing that through consuming all of these things that are just straight up distracting them from their connection because that's the biggest way they can take away our power. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, the, and then, and then on top of that, I mean, all of this, all of the content is being fed by algorithms and media manipulation. So it's like these ideas and the media that you're consuming is all being spoon fed to you there, there's an agenda behind all of this so so it's it's like the best thing to do would be to opt isolate. out yeah opt to, out to, i mean that's what i do right and it's or, not or 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 you become extremely selective that's, in the channels yeah. that you're consuming yeah this is why like on instagram i only follow like 80 people or something and a lot of those people are like my family because i you know or like a fashion thing that i want to look at or something that's actually really inspiring activating like a woman empowerment something Right. I because I notice that when I do go on Instagram, I I just end up like mindlessly scrolling. And if I have like random people that I'm following or people that are not inspiring or activating for me, I'd rather just see them in in my community or see them in real life. Like I don't need to see exactly what they're doing all day long or what they think about this thing that's happening in the world. Like, yeah. You know, like it's I'm very selective. I feel like everyone should be. But this thing about forced residence, I, I, it's really something that I've been feeling into, like like allowing, you know, we have a choice whether we allow the world to force its vibration onto us or the other option is what they call symbiotic resonance, where we are in harmony with source and with nature and with the community that we really love, like the people we want to share resonance with. Well, r but but then what do you, how do you deal with, a situation where like I was back in the US and I was like I was in LA and it's Fuck. like it's like this is where I am like I don't I don't like at the time yeah that's what's up and I don't have much of a choice in the matter and it, like of course I didn't really want to be there at the time but I was there and 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 what was like I could feel it every day it was like I was I th there was a deep disharmony like like a, you between know, you and 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 the, my surroundings my environment yeah, yeah. the people that i'm surrounded by and and so it's like and, and so i have a it's like this is a question to me is like for people who are in that but don't have I the totally, means to get out like what do you what do you do i call it going into mission mode like when we lived in berlin so the island last year was i was really i was really sad by what was happening to the island last year it was just like so overrun and then i'm just like okay is this what's happening is the whole world just bringing their chaos into our little paradise and so faraday and i went to berlin and i would say that berlin is a pretty conscious or you know it has consciousness within it of course it also has everything else it's kind of why a lot of people love it because you can have whatever you want there but i mean there is a huge conscious community and faraday has a big community there and I was like, okay, I can, you know, explore my sexuality more, take some different classes. I, I love going dancing and I love being in nature. They have nice parks there. And then when I got there, <laughs> we spent almost every single day in Tiergarten, which is the biggest park there. It's like a forest and it's a 10 minute bicycle ride from Ferdy's place. Um, and I just remember feeling like so <laughs> my like nature battery was so low all the time even when I was in the park all day long and and then the people that I did want to hang out with a lot of them had nine to five jobs or you know they lived on the other side of town and it was like it was just it felt oh I don't even like talking about like the vibration of ugh, it just it felt like work like the whole like existing felt like work <laughs> Yeah, it's all like mechanized. <laughs> yeah, and so for me, the way that I dealt with it was every <coughs> single morning I woke up and I did my meditation, my rape, like in the apartment. Or there was like 
Um, there's a little park nearby, but it's not super nice. Um, and like if I didn't have my meditation routine and my journaling and my rape, um, I think I would have like lost my mind there. Um, and then we just ended up going on trips a lot to like deep nature. We went to, we went to Czech Republic t- t- two or three times and we went to Austria. But I would say for people who are, you know, and anytime I've been in Europe, like since I've lived on the island, I just really make sure I have my practice. Like it doesn't matter if I'm in Amsterdam with my girlfriends partying because it's Pride Week. Like at the end of the day, even if it's like 3 a.m. in the morning, I will do my meditation, put put my meditation music on, do some rape, journal, and just really connect back to source. Like that is my connection. That is my home. This is our earth home base, but really we are just these spiritual beings that are having a, a temporary physical experience. And you know, a lot of people message and they're like, and I also feel this, I'm like, why is there not more of us gathering together? And the, the the answer I I get a lot of times like through channelings and through different things is that right now be, because the whole world is in this very pivotal moment of are we going to choose fear or are we going to choose love like are we going to stay in our groundedness or are we going to like disempower ourselves um, we are strategically placed everywhere mm-hmm. like it's like this grid that's like we're lighting up the grid all over the world. And just by us being there. And I think this is also why last summer we were in Berlin because we we met a huge, amazing, like I met all of Faraday's amazing German community. We did a retreat in Austria. I traveled around and I could just feel that like vibration. I would be in a new city and like people would just be staring at me. And then I was joking with my friends. I'm like, this is the, the Copenhagen energy. It's getting spread everywhere, you know, because like it was just this vibration and I would, and I would just smile at people and people are just like, I had people just stop walking like I would smile at them and they'd just be so shocked that someone smiled and they would just stop walking in the middle of the street and I'm just like okay I'm just gonna keep going (laughs) you know and um of course after a while after like five months in Europe I didn't smile at anyone anymore because it just yeah that forced resonance like I just started to be like oh it's not that safe or I have to watch my bag you know like Faraday's bike bicycle has been stolen like four times in in Berlin like in his apartment (laughs) in a locked container for me the barometer was my leggings (laughs) what do you mean because I the first when I went back I was wearing leggings on a regular basis if you don't know Dan he wears these psychedelic leggings of like unicorns and amazing crystals colors and yeah, that's what he's known wizards. for. Rainbow I wizards. I love it. So what you're saying you didn't, you didn't well, that, wear? It was, that was like one, that was like a canary in the coal mine where it was like I was wearing leggings on a pretty regular basis. And then, um, and I, and then I, and, and like at first I was wearing them, like I went back to the U.S. and I was wearing them, continuing to wear them. And then over time I wore them less and less because... Um, because there, there was, it felt, it, it, uh, it, it was less and less comfortable to wear them outside. It was like, it, it drew too much attention. It was like, that's the thing is like, do we want to be these beacons of light? I think that's the thing that a yeah. lot of people, I feel a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, it's hard to be myself in the matrix because people either want to dim my light Yeah. Or they want to suck on it, <laughs> like absorb it for themselves. They're not like, here, I, I'm here to inspire you for your light, you know? Yeah. It, well, and it, it takes a lot of energy because like if I, if I want to go to the, if I want to go out and I'm wearing leggings and nail polish and, you know, looking what, I, however I, I look on a regular day, um, I go out and it's like everywhere I go, it, it just, it draws a lot of attention. And so, and then that takes energy and it's like, there's a lot. And then after a while I just wake up and I'm like, man, I just don't have the energy to do this today. Like I just, I don't, you don't have the energy to be the beacon of light of being your authentic self or I don't, yeah, I don't know. I guess. I mean, it, I mean, I it think just, that's what it is. I'm not joking. I mean, I'm saying it as if it's a joke, but I, I do. Well, think and then, and then some days I do, it's like some days I go out and it's like, it, it's exciting. And it, when I'm in the mood to, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, Oh, I meet people. I talk, you know, people give me comments, compliments. Great. 
and I love it. But then, and then some days it's just like, fuck man, I just, I don't have it in me to, you know, and then I, and then I wear pants, you know? No, like, Dan, I well, cannot th- imagine you with pants. Right. I say that with all seriousness. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. And so, so after a few months, by the end of the trip. What, what kind of I pants was, are these? Like brown pants, blue pants? Like what the fuck, dude? You can't do that. Um, this is well, like you know, part you know of what, your soul contract well, you know is what, to wear leggings. You know what I was playing with was army camo pants. <laughs> Because I was going the other, I, I went the other. I cannot imagine that. Because no, because I, I was like, I was like going in the uh, other end of the spectrum, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna. And so I was starting to do like military vibe, and I was wearing black boots and and what? army fatigue. What? Dude? It was cool. It was it what was a cool. What parallel reality were you in? It was cool. But that, but it, it's like, it, and so like, I still find ways to play. Like it's like play with the fashion, but it's not. But but I'm compromising. I'm I'm compromising to fit the environment that I'm in. And um, yeah, that's not cool. I mean, I understand and I feel you. And also, I I think like so many people who are listening to this are probably like, yeah, that's like I just I, like they are like, yeah, I get that. I I'm, I understand. And at the same time, it beats you down and wears you out. But I think and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to give them something positive here, dude. <laughs> Like we'll get there. Like, we'll get there. Just, just, it's, 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 it just, just beats you down. Yeah, just, we'll, we'll just get lay there. on the floor. No, it's not, no, put on the not, camo no, pants. No, because this isn't a sad story. This isn't a tragedy. We're just, we're just like we have to cut. We have to move through these chapters here. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a sob story. No, for real. no, just, I but know. it's like a. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was like trying to think of like when I was in Berlin, what did help me, and I do think that. What helped me is when I found, even if it was one other person who like got it, like someone, I call them Copenhagen family, like anyone who I knew, like, cause the, if you've been in Copenhagen, you've been in the community and you see someone outside of Copenhagen, you just like, are like, Oh my God. Like, even if you weren't close on the mm-hmm. Island, you're just so excited to be with someone who gets it or like someone who just is like on a spiritual path and is just understanding you know where we are in the world and, and yeah they might be out in the matrix doing their thing i don't think that you need to live on kopanyong we cannot fit everyone here i'm just saying it felt really good when i was able to share this this resonance with someone this vibration with someone who also had a similar vibration and then you're like oh okay i don't have to be the only one carrying this all by myself in the world um and yeah well i yeah i for me, a lot of that source was from the Burning Man community, because mm-hmm. um, that I that's all like them. this this because that's this past year it was also what brought me back to the states was for the burn and then. Are you going this year? No, I'm not planning on it. What about next year? I was thinking next year I go. Next year, um, I don't know. We'll see. Flow state. It's so funny. I've never been to the burn, but I've been to so many Burning Man uh, events in New York City when I lived there. And it's just yeah. such a nice community. And they all just assume that I've already been. And I'm like, I know. Yeah, yeah. I fit in here. Yeah. It's like, well, these and, are my and people. The, yeah. And it's like that. It's like the artist community. It's like the weirdos and mm-hmm. the, the performers and the. The people um, are where they're okay to stand out. They're not trying to conform. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. For and sure. so it's just, it's like they're okay, out ho- there. How is this not a sob story? Can we give them something positive here? Um, yeah, but well, I don't, yeah. <laughs> it gets better. It does. Yeah. Well, th- you're, th- this is too general. We, I mean, <laughs> I just um, thinking of like so many of my friends, especially that are back in Europe, just working a nine to five job and really, really loving, you know, my lifestyle here. A lot of them have come to visit or even like Alexandra. Alexandra is one of our really good friends who has lived on Copenhagen during lockdown with us and like i know she's told me flat out she wants to come back here and she just is like in this like matrix bubble where you know it makes sense to stay and they have Mm -hmm. a lease on their apartment and she doesn't really like it there she doesn't have her community but she's like this is the logical thing to do Mm. i just feel like everyone needs to like follow their hearts like yeah well I mean, I mean that, yeah, it's risk taking. It's like that's, I think, you know, 
a lot of what has guided me and and just you know brought me to where I am now is that I have a really high risk tolerance and I I I can be kind of reckless but I but it, it's I follow my instinct well other and, people would consider it reckless for you it makes sense right right well yeah well exactly it's it makes sense and it's almost like it, it's the only thing to do it's like I can feel it I've and, had so many moments like that I remember when I left New York City and started traveling with my travel company and I sat in my bedroom of my very nice upper Manhattan par- apartment and I was just like what am I doing because it was the first time where I was like, I'm not coming back to America. I could feel that I would never live in America again. Yeah. And I had this really cushy law firm job and, you know, a 401k, which is like the savings that they give you and like, you know, bonuses, everything. And I was just like, bye, I guess I'm going off. Well, right. So everything made, it made sense to stay, but, mm-hmm. but you deep down your intuition knew that it didn't make sense at yeah, all. And I, then you were willing to take the risk to leave what yeah. made sense. Yeah. And that it's a, that's a hard thing to do, you know, but, but I mean, that's, that's sometimes that's what's necessary. It's like, yeah. And I, f- I feel like we don't need to get so, we don't need to wait until it gets so bad before we make these risks. You know, I, f- I feel like I want to encourage people to be more badass. Like, give no fucks. Do what is good for you, you know? Like, of course, be nice to people as much as you can, but, like, take charge of your life. Like, this is something that came to me when I was in the water this morning was sometimes I feel really, I, you know, since I was little, I've never really, I've always known that, like, this is not my home. Like, the earth is just this temporary place that I'm choosing to have my soul be in right now but i've never felt like a lot of home vibrations here and because of that and also because of looking at how fucked up the world has gotten and is and the people are choosing to keep going with it i've felt this kind of like non-committalness to my life i don't know this is a very weird thing to try and explain but i've done so much in my life and i've helped so many people and you know just had the biggest adventures all over the world and at the same time i can feel in myself there's this like part of me that's like not fully committed all the way because i'm like what's the point like i'm not i'm not here for that long like let's just Let's just for a long time I thought I was only gonna live till I was thirty because my aunt, who was kinda like a mom to me, died when she was thirty of breast cancer. And um I didn't realize that this was some weird thing I had in my head. So I was like really going hard. And and then when I was thirty is when um around then is when I was hitting coming close to the thirty year mark of my life and I was just like oh okay I'm not dying I guess I should like slow down a little bit and actually like enjoy this more but what okay so what I was realizing this morning in the water was if we're gonna be here like our souls chose to be here in this very pivotal moment it's actually a super exciting moment in the timeline like if we're looking at it from like a broader perspective of like we're gonna look back and be like remember that crazy time that COVID happened and then this thing happened and then that thing and like whoa where were you during all that time like how did you react were you in the fear did you choose to be in your power you know all these things and like for me in order to really enjoy this all the way and be like the most empowered version of myself I need to fully commit to being alive in this timeline because this is what I meant about like the depression sometimes gets me because you know and This is where, like, it's very easy for whoever has this agenda to keep us disempowered is because they can just poke at you. Like, for me, recently, it was, like, the nature on the island. They just poke at me. These are things that Brittany feels disempowered about because she can't change it. And then I can choose to set my resonance, my vibration as everything's okay. The island will take care of itself. Like, I will do what I can in my power. I'm, I'm choosing to stay in my power. And also, I feel like if I choose more and more to be in this timeline, I will just give less fucks and just be more badass, like be more bold in everything I'm doing. Because I think sometimes I like, you know, I start this project here and then I just like, oh, yeah, what's the point? Like, and then I start this project over here and I'm like, oh, yeah, what's the point? It's like everything I do just blows up and is very successful. But I'm the only one. It's like I, I get bored and disinterested before I really let it like 
take off all the way, you know? What do you think about that? Hmm. Hmm. Like, do you feel fully committed to your life? No, I think I could be more. Like, I don't, I don't know that, I, I don't know that that's ever really achievable, like fully committed. But yeah, no, I like, I, I, I strive to be more engaged and immersed and excited um, in what I'm doing, whatever that is. Um, you know, it's it's funny the it, it's funny about how like how you feel about home or that this is a temporary thing because I. I have I've I have a f this I get this feeling sometimes and I've had I've had some you know some moments like on psychedelics where I get this it's I mean it's really a knowing it's it's not it's not even a feeling it's like it's this knowing it's this undeniable sense that um it's it's basically just like we're we're doing this forever like there, there is nowhere else to be like, like this is an infinite, we've been doing this for millions of lifetimes. We're going to continue doing this for millions of lifetimes. And all there is, is the present moment. And, and so the only thing you can do is like shift the present moment to a state. It's like heaven now, like heaven on earth now, like that, like manifest that now because, because there's nowhere else to go. Like there, there is, you know, it's like the concept of home is like you, you, there is it, like home doesn't even exist like there is nowhere else to to be and and like death de like death isn't an option death death is, death provides no escape <laughs> so it's like so so you might as well make the most of it like and 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 also and then it brings up this idea that it's like okay well if that's the case then it's also like stop living even for this lifetime because the th it's like if I the things that we create are going to exist forever or like it, it's like an it's like for for the next lifetime and the, our children but then it's like and for you like like if if you it's like reincarnation mm -hmm. it's like if you build a trash dump next door you might die but like you're gonna be back and you're gonna have to deal with that and you like you might be the kid living in the trash dump you know it's it's like but in in what but it's like the karma yeah, you know yeah. and and so it's like like there is nowhere like. So we're in a simulation. Death is not an escape from that. It's an endless simulation. And but 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 there's there's something about it that's it's like there's a lightheartedness to it where that allows you to be bold. And it's like because nothing matters. No, nothing matters. And so you just make it fun. Yeah, and that's and well, just that's make it fun. Right. Nothing matters, and we're all walking around acting like it does. And we're acting like it's like <laughs> matters too much. Like Faraday's yeah. always telling me, Brittany just lighten up and it's like there's this part of me that like is like looks at everything i'm like this is so fucking ridiculous you know like just everything right. like that like I existence itself like yeah it, yeah like, like when you hit this certain point of like awakeness you're just like what the fuck like we just it's absurd we're just we're all just pretending like right. all of this ma that's what i mean like i hit this point like almost every morning when i wake up i'm just like but then for me What's hard that the challenge that I have is the feeling like other people don't get it. Living in a world where other people don't get the same, like the same thing that I get, that Faraday gets, what you just said you got. Like, like we're, this is it, guys. Like, let's take care of the earth. Let's be nice to each other. We're all connected. We're all interconnected in this one big soup. We might as well just be nice to each other. We might as well just get along. We might as well just like love each other. And then when I wake up and people are just like, rah, 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 and I'm just like, okay. So this is what I mean. It's like, if I'm able to just set my vibration in the morning, then I can just shine my light and just be in this knowingness and people will vibrationally get it just through feeling yeah, my it, all, all you can do is be, be a beacon for other people to find the way. But you can, I mean, you can tell somebody this all day, but unless they feel it, you know, unless they, it's, it's like a they, vibration. Yeah. They have to get there themselves. And, and, and that's their journey. Yeah. Also, like, that's also part of the fun. Like, it's like, if this is all, you know, I do believe this is all a game and a simulation that our soul is creating. We're, 
you know, projecting ourselves into the simulation. And it's like, we might as well let people have their games, you know, like if they want to take five lifetimes to get to the same point that we're just talking about right now, that's their journey. I'm not going to take that journey away from them. If people want to wake up, if they want to understand what's going on, I'm here. I can talk all day about this. Let's go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like taking it too seriously, taking it's the attachment, the the identifying with I wonder the, why I get story. I take it too seriously. Like I it's like I'm in the fucking knowingness. I think it's just because it's hard for me to see people hurt themselves. When they're like I'm just like why are you? and also the earth. I'm like if you want to go hurt yourself and like do self-harm in whatever way you're going to do it fine but if you're like cutting down the nature around me and like hurting mama earth fuck you like that's how i feel and then at the same time i'm like mama earth is great she's also raising her frequency did you notice that the earth is also ascending with us right now like it literally is this is why it's also going through earthquakes and like a lot of like global things because it's also going through its own vibrational changes and this is why a lot of the cosmos is looking at us right now because it's very rare for a planet and a sp civilization, a species to ascend at the same time, to go to a higher vibration collectively. So I just find this really interesting because everything that I've been getting is like, Mama Earth is fine. She does not need our pity. She's good. She needs us to be in our power because when the more we're in our power, the more we can be allies with her. But like, she's going to, she's going to be fine, you know? Mm hmm but I think for me, it's just like talking about this helps because when it's all in your head, it's like, <laughs> you know, I might as well just be asleep <laughs> because like it, I mean, Faraday and I talk about this all day long. It's just like, I would love to have more people who get it. And we all talk about this. And I know there are because they reach out to me all the time. It's just that they are like the one person in their city in this small town in Europe somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think for me, a thing, like a theme for my life has, it's like playfulness. Like I find playfulness to sort of be the way. Like, because if you, if you can play, then to play is to let go. It's, it's like to really play and have fun and, and enjoy playing is like, the act of not taking things seriously yeah and and for and so for me this like i've had this is like a thing that i've had to work on and call in more and develop my whole life because i because i i can be pretty serious you what know? is your version of play what do you do to play like i know uh, you, you paint you dance you like going dancing oh no i don't know i mean it's, i don't know it's 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 just more like a a way of being like a way of interacting with people and you know it's like like flirting flirting is a is a very playful activity mm -hmm. um you know it's like it's just like making jokes it, like every you know it's it's like it's not even about the because because the game can be anything the mm -hmm. game you can you can use a hula hoop or you can build software you know <laughs> but it's how you do it. So it's the the attitude, the orientation, like the energy that you're going into it is playful. Right. Okay. Like you can be a finance guy on Wall Street and still play. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you can, and that, that's the thing. Like you can build, you can build things, you can create, and and like you can be like a masculine guy creating mm -hmm. stuff, but still doing it in a playful, fun, enjoyable way. Um, I love that. That's something that I am calling in more of because I feel like. For me, it was like this big belief system around like, like I have gotten myself to the point where I am actually physically safe in my life. And then I still had this like vibration of feeling unsafe. And when you don't feel safe, you don't feel playful. You're right. You're just well, like, yeah, when I'm serious, I don't <laughs> flirt. Yeah. Like I don't like I don't talk to girls when I'm in a serious mood because okay, I'm like too so serious to flirt. And it's like, yeah, but but it's a good I, but it's a good it's a good indication of where I'm at. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, like that's the vibration that I'm in. And sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's like, yeah, sometimes be serious. But w when it's 
too much like that. It's like, like it, that's a good, that's a way that I can sort of gauge what's mm -hmm. going on is like. Yeah, I feel like this is kind of where Faraday and I are such good balancing each other out because like he's learning the groundedness from me, like staying grounded when you need to. There is times where it's important to take things seriously and I'm learning the playfulness from him. Like mm. there's times where it doesn't matter. Most of the time it really doesn't matter or good, you know, like all this stuff and that's helping. But I want to talk to you about, this is the other thing I want to talk to you about while we're here is flirting. Okay. So oh like man. I made a whole podcast about this yesterday, about like some of the stuff that me going on dates and, and like, um, I just have been in this vibration of like, okay, I want to flirt more. I want to just be more open. Like my energy field, I would like it to be more in my feminine and receptive and like open to flirting. Because in the past when I would date, I noticed I still was in this feeling unsafe. And so then I would step into my masculine like and do certain things that I wouldn't want to, like I just want to, you know, receive. So anyways, I wanted to hear what you thought about this. So I'm at, Zen I'm at the beach this morning and I'm meditating. I just had a really nice swim and this guy. So first off, I had a dream about my ex-boyfriend who is, um, Turkish last night. I met, he's London boy, but he's from Turkey and he's like tall, dark, handsome, lots of tattoos, a boxer, you know, like the whole thing. And, um, for some reason I had a dream about him last night and then this morning at the beach there's a guy who looks exactly like him like I, I like double took because I was like is that Oz and then I'm just I cont continuing to meditate and he's to my right like sitting and then he gets up <laughs> and you know the thing where people like that you can just feel that they're checking like I had my eyes closed but I could feel that he was looking at me so I opened my eyes and he's like looking right at me and he's trying to pretend like he's not and he's like walking in the water and I was like okay so then I go into the water and Afro comes with me and um he like walks back and you know comments on Afro and then I'm just like yeah yeah you know she likes to look at the fish and like this and that. And then he comes and he like sits next near me, but like not too near me, like not being creepy or anything. And then he like doesn't say anything. And so this is the moment where I'm like, I'm open, I'm receptive, but I'm like, sh okay, so he already started the conversation. So I, w I was thinking like, should I have said something? Because then my friend Moni, you know, Moni, she was there with her mom. And so she waved at me and then she came over and I ended up talking to her for a while. And when I came out, the guy had moved his towel and ended up like putting it right in front of where I'd put my stuff. Like literally <laughs> it's me sitting, facing him, facing the sea. And I was just kind of laughing and I'm like, okay. And then he moves it again. And like, so it's like next to me, but like, you know, like the, the next one over <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm open. I'm receptive. I'm here, you know, like just like waiting for him to say something. And then I keep like looking over and like smiling and he's just like smiling back at me, but kind of like, and then looking at his phone, you know, like, like I think he's definitely new to the island. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to do, like, I, I didn't know what to do. So then I just got up, put my clothes on and uh, I left. And then when I got home, I was like, should I have said something? Like, cause I felt like I was very open and receptive and I, you know, I actually have made a whole podcast where I hate, I said, I hate when men talk to me at the beach in the morning because mm. I'm like in my meditation. Oh yeah. But I, I actually like, <laughs> I actually really liked this guy and I wanted <laughs> him to talk to me. And then he right. was like, I don't know. Like it was so obvious to me, like that he wanted to interact, but he didn't know how, or I wasn't sure if he was worried to take up space and then I was thinking, like, should I have just said something to just open the conversation? I was just wondering what you thought. Because we were talking the other day about this, like, flirting. And because I'm like, maybe I'm just not a good flirt. Like, because there is this thing where when I actually like a guy, I kind of avoid him. I kind of, like, don't give him eye contact. I kind of, like, give off this energy of, like, it's like this, I don't care, you know, when I actually want him to come talk to me. <laughs> So, but today I was really, you know, I was smiling at him. I made conversation. I felt like I was pretty open. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I, 
I mean, I think I, f- I feel like to a large extent, that's how everybody feels like everybody's walking around just like, I'm not good at flirting. I don't know what to do. I want to talk <coughs> like I want to talk to them, but I don't know what to say. Like I went home and I was like, that was a misconnection. I could have just talked. I could have just been like, yeah, let's just talk. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And and, and that's the thing. I, I, I get the I get the sense that that for the most part, everybody's is just kind of walking around doing that <laughs> and, then, like, <laughs> and everyone kind of, everyone like wishes that, you know, and, and, and there's, I mean, there's things, it, it is complicated, you know, as a guy, it's like, does she want somebody to, you know, am I hitting on her? Like, you know, cause it's like, yeah, that's what I mean. Like I was wondering, cause like, you know, we're both to the beach and be alone, but yeah, then that we're guy, like, I want we're him both, to talk to me we're and both, only him. Yeah. When we're both naked, you know, it's like, naked or like, like the, the other day, the other day, um, this girl, I was at ecstatic and she, I came out of nowhere and she was like, Hey, um, she was like, will you save me from this guy? And I was like, sure. And she was like, yeah, he was asking me on a date. He wanted to go out after this. And I said, I was busy. And then I was like, and I, and then I was just kind of being silly. I was being silly. And I was like, do you want to, do you want to go on a date? after this? And she was like, yeah. With you. She yeah. wanted to go on a date with you, but yeah, not with it, him. Right. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's like, it's like, she didn't want to talk like she it, it, it's it was selective you know of and it's, course it, but it's like so interesting because with like how do i put this is gonna sound stuck up but like with most men i can feel their energy coming towards me like energetically that they're interested i am not interested you know most of the time so i'm just like no thank you and with this guy it was the first like it was like my energy was connecting to him because my eyes were closed at first i didn't notice him at first i was meditating and then i opened my eyes and then i'm like someone's watching me and I actually like it, you know? Well, it sounds like with him, it was just a case of him not knowing how to approach you. Yeah. And so, but do you think in that moment I should have, like, sometimes I wonder like, am I being too much in my masculine if I'm just, but then I'm like, who, like, again, this is the serious part of me. Like, or I could just be playful. Well, right. Right. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, what what do you want? Do you just do what you want? I feel like, like I have this a lot. I have dreams the night before and then something happens that relates to the dream. And I feel like me having this dream and seeing him was like a hint from my higher self. Like you need to talk to them. Maybe yeah. nothing happened besides me just talking to him in that moment. But there was like a, like I needed to talk to him yeah. and I didn't. And I can feel my higher self being like, come on, Brittany, we even gave you a dream. What else do you want? You want him on a silver platter? You know? Right. And, and it's, yeah. And it's like, you know, yeah, like feminine, masculine, it's on him to to be proactive and take action, sure. But, but I, w- I will, I'm not even putting it on him. I'm putting it more on my shyness because I actually thought it was attractive. <laughs> That's where I'm putting right. it. Right. But I, I get, I think, yeah, it's like this programming freezes me and I can blame it on that. But it really, what it is, is like, I'm like, my inner little girl is like, ooh, you know, and it's, it feels nice to feel like, ooh. It just I'm yeah. I'm celebrating me feeling that way like oh someone I actually want to connect with great so basically if I see him again I'm gonna talk to him I'm just gonna be like yeah. hey I saw you like you know let's let's just chat there's something here to explore well I've I've been putting a lot of attention on this stuff lately and mm-hmm. like the the around approaching people and. Man, there's like a there's like a three inch area to yeah, hold yeah. this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I've been like listening to audio books and about study- flirting. Well, about about fl- about flirting, about dating, about masculinity, mm-hmm. and about um about public speaking and conversation, small talk. Like, and a lot of it's super basic. A lot of it's stuff that's like it, like I skip through it, but um but I've been putting a lot of attention on this stuff and, and this, and, and, and like, it's like in the morning I'll be like, okay, today I'm going to approach three people. And then, and I, and it's like, it's so hard to do it. Like I can't do it. Is this like specifically for dating? Um, mostly for dating, but it's just in general too. Like it's not, it's not only about talking to girls, but, it, but yeah, like at the end of the day, it's like my goal my yeah. If there's one goal, it's to get more dates, talk to more girls, strike or just, just strike up more conversations. Just go out of my way to introduce myself, to ask for a name, whatever. And, and beyond that, it's, you know, if, if, if I actually have a real thing to talk about in a question, 
that's great. But at the at a minimum, all I all I have to do is introduce myself and say hi. This sounds like pickup artist stuff. I mean, no, it, I just no, want to make no, sure it, the vibration you're you're doing this in is like not like creepy. I don't think it is, but I'm just saying that it's. Like women don't want to feel like they're just like a number that you need to like check off. Like, okay, she's my number two of people I talk to today. It's like, I want to know that I actually am special and that you are excited to talk well, to me. Well, right. And that's, but that's part of, part of this whole thing is, is like, yeah, to a certain extent it is like, I'm, it's not a number to check off, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to motivate myself to take action because in a lot of cases I would be that guy sitting on the beach, not knowing, <laughs> like, I want to talk to the girl. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And like, the thing is what I was about to say is if, if I had initiated, which was me and my masculine, I would have friend zoned him probably because I'm like, okay, he's not interested because he didn't try and make an effort, you know, like we're just going to hang out then. Like I would probably just not be as attracted to him. Right. So this is, so this is what I'm, I'm supporting th- this, what you're this, saying. This, this is what I'm experimenting with. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm testing and experimenting and playing in this space of, of these dynamics. Now, one of the things that I think that I've been surprised by mm-hmm. is that this has actually been really hard to like, you know, be, because I'm not, I'm not just going to go to the market and just go around introducing myself to check numbers off a list. But, but I've still, it's like, even though I'm thinking about this and studying it and giving it attention, mm-hmm. I still find it really hard to, to go out of my way to, to talk to people. But what I've been finding is that I've, I'm cr- I've created a, an energy field where other people are coming to me and introducing oh, themselves. Oh, that's nice. And so, so it's like I'm still I'm still manifesting. You're setting that vibration, right? This and, is and the it, thing: is like whatever intention and vibration that you're setting is going to be attracted in. Right. And so it's like I'm trying to do it one way, but it's actually coming to me in a in a different form, which is even and, more beautiful. I feel like. Yeah, it's like that girl just coming up to at a ecstatic dance. Right, and yeah, and it's like it's been happening daily, where oh. out of nowhere, I it's like I turn around or what somebody comes around a corner and they just stop and they're like, "Hi, what's your name?" Aww. And it's like, "Oh, wait," and I'm like, "I'm like, but that's what I'm like. I'm supposed to be doing that to you, <laughs> like you're doing it to me." And then and then we end up having experiences. Like I've I've been making friends. We've I've, mm-hmm. the other day I spent like half the day with this girl, like you know and and it's like and, and so it's like i'm i'm getting it, it's yeah it's coming in i feel in like it's more about forms. like connection than it is of course at the right. end of the day you would love to fall in love with someone and like you know date them and all these things or get laid whatever it is but like it sounds i mean we all crave this connection right that, no yeah it's connection i want more connection i want yeah. i want to be connected with more people. I want to share experiences with interesting people. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. And, and I feel like my vibration I'm setting off is like, I'm open to flirting with cute men. I'm open. I'm here. I'm receptive. Cause for me where I'm at with dating is I really would love to be more in my inner little girl where I don't have to take care of anything. The person's just excited to hang out with me and vibe and, like they know how amazing it is to spend time with me and they're just excited, you know? Like I feel like when you and I hang out, like I feel that with you. I feel like we appreciate each other's vibration. We appreciate each other's souls and we like, we just feel so fun. It's so fun to hang out, you know? And I'm calling in more of those connections and flirting also like that and also romantic. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I like I'm surrounded by amazing, beautiful people every in any Aww. direction, and it's like I want to know more. You know, I I don't know. It's like I want to relate. <laughs> you know, yeah. like whatever, whatever in whatever form that is, it's fun. I think that's beautiful. Know? This is how a beautiful way to grow our consciousness. Like we're here to grow, and what better way than through connection with other amazing souls? Yeah. I, I think this is also how I'm feeling a little bit lately. It's like I just feel a little lonely, and I'm, 
it's not like I have so many people in my community. I'm so connected, but I, I think I'm miss like I'm, I want some spiciness. I'm craving some like new connections of new right. reflections. So I really like what you're doing. I think that's amazing. But next time I'm going to just talk to the guy. That's basically where I'm at. She's like, what does it matter? Just talk to him. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's like being in that playful vibration mm-hmm. makes it, it makes it, na- that's, it makes it natural. Then mm-hmm. you're not even thinking about it. it just happens. You're just yeah, exuding I think I was already over flirtiness. Thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like and, Jess. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a state of being. Okay. And, and I mean this, and it's like, this is like with comedy. It's the same. It's like, it's like the, it's not. It, it, you know, it's like the, the, the way that I've my, my the way that I've been, um, been approaching comedy is the same thing. It's like you can you can say any joke you it's you can say anything, but it's the vibration that it's infused mm. with that makes it funny. It's a it's a state of being. Everything is vibration. Right, and so everything. So, <laughs> and well, and and and, that, and that's the that's the irony of these these all it? these these books and these these self help guides or whatever is that is that what what i'm arriving at is that none of this shit matters actually at all because it's just it's it's just a vibration they're trying to reverse engineer something intellectually that is a vibrate it's like a beingness right maybe they're trying to help you get to the beingness like that state of being that vibration but that's really that's really where it's at like I think about my cat who's walking right in front of us right now. She literally sleeps all day long, plays at nighttime when she's activated, and we feed her. Like everything is taken care of, and she doesn't have to think about anything. She's just here. She just exists. This is a beingness. She's pure, and like Faraday and I just think she's like the most adorable thing ever. I'm gonna put her on the camera. Well, and she doesn't. She doesn't look very concerned about what other people are up to or no what's she happening gives, she gives no fucks what's happening around she's just like like they're they're cutting stuff around our house she's like okay whatever like you know the only thing she really gives a fuck about is like if there's other dogs around she doesn't like dogs besides afro yeah that's a threat mm-hmm. but i would say other than that she's in like a total like absolute safety vibration and mommy and daddy will take care of everything for me and i'm the princess and like there's times where Faraday will literally lift her up from her cushion because he and carry her around the house because he doesn't want to have to like bother her. <laughs> she really <laughs> is the princess. And it's just because it's her vibration. Hey, princess. Oh, she's licking Dan's finger right now. <laughs> this is happening. Mm. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> I feel done. <laughs> I feel like we said a lot. <laughs> I really do wish I had talked to this guy this morning. Like I was like, oh, I hope I see him again. And then like I think about Cobain Young and, and life in general. Like a lot of times there isn't a second chance. Like you were there for that moment. Like what we were saying. Like fucking take up space in that moment. Talk to the person. Like smile at someone. Do something yeah. positive. Like it's the it's the energy of that moment. And yeah. like you can't create that again. Like you might see him. You might see him at the but cake shop or something. Same, but no. it, yeah, it's gonna be Just a different Just realize I'm wearing my pants backwards. I don't care. Who gives a fuck? I didn't notice. <laughs> yeah, like it might not yeah. But I would say that it will be interesting to see him again and like talk about that because that's an interesting thing. Mm. Like, because I know that we both wanted to talk to each other. So like, that's interesting. I hope that we at least get that, you know, but there is something special about that moment. Like I just had a dream last night. Here's this person who looks <laughs> almost exactly like my ex. Why is this happening? Oh, I'm probably supposed to talk to him. I didn't. Okay. So for me, I'm just taking it as next time. It's just in general, more playfulness, everything, everything in my life, more playfulness. Yeah. Any last words, my dear? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'm feeling a little more playful now. I I'm, I have I'm, I wasn't I haven't been feeling so playful today in general. Why? Because he woke up so early? Or no, I don't know. It's not that. It, it, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just one of the. It's just that's the mood of the day. The I'm, mood. I'm a little bit cantankerous. Cantankerous. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I'm. I'm get the, But I'm getting more playful. This is. I'm mm. feeling more playful. I'm getting my playback. <laughs> 
Well, let's get some playback by I'm gonna go eat some watermelon and okay. drink the rest I'm of that juice. Go pee. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, love you all. Thank you for being on the Brittany Bond podcast. I don't know why I said that weird. <laughs> Brittany Bond <laughs> podcast. <laughs> this is Dan Baker and we are signing off with much love and the little kitty. Let me show her one more time. <laughs> okay, bye.